Father, we just thank you for this message right now, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you would explode in this place, Father, that you would move on our hearts, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you would take us on a journey, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you would take us in a whirlwind of your presence, Father. We cast down every Leviathan spirit right now. We cast down every work of the enemy, the accuser, the brethren. And we thank you, Lord, for a release of power right now and revelation, Father, and understanding, Father. We break all the lies of the enemy in our minds, Father, that tries to take us over day and night, Father. That tries to take us over at work, Father. That tries to take us over in the presence of our friends and family and in the setting of the body of Christ, Father. Every spirit that binds us, Father, to be timid, to shrink back, every spirit that keeps us from being ourself in you, Father, we bind that spirit, Father. We want to be ourself in you, Father. We want to be free like David, Father. We don't want to be like Saul that's worrying about other people all the time. We want to dance like David. And that's what this message is called right now, dance like David. We need to dance like David. And there was two people, God, and God told me this week, are you dancing like David or are you dancing like Saul? Why didn't David dance, notice? But Saul didn't dance. Why didn't Saul dance naked before the people? Because he was worried about what the people were thinking. He was worried about the people. See, we need to get, we need to be like David and in our daily walk, I'm not even talking about just dancing, but I'll tell you what, if you can't, and I'm, 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 I'm talking from a place of being set free, if you cannot dance before the Lord because you're worried about what people are thinking, you need to get delivered from what people think about you. You need to get delivered from living through people's thoughts and the filter of their mind. Everybody, all of us have a level of this and we all need to be delivered from it in some sort of fashion. Some, everywhere they go, they have to, it's, they come onto this witchcraft all the time. They live under a place of witchcraft. Leviathan's constantly with them and they don't realize it because all they're worried about is what, what are the people thinking of me? What's she thinking of me? I go out with him to hang out with him I'm all, I'm all, and I get under their spirits because all I'm worried about is what they think about me. I come out, I come with the family of God, I, and nobody's, everybody's free except you because all you're worried about is what they're thinking about you. See, we need to be free to be able to, not, I'm not talking about, because when people are, are thinking about us, but they're, but they're worried about the truth about us or whatever, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when we live in this place where we're always thinking about what everybody else is thinking about, not thinking about what he's thinking about. We need to live in this place where all we do is, it's me and you, God. Oh, that's, all, that's all that matters. I don't care what anybody's seeing right now or, or thinking right now. That's when we live in a pure, when a, in a pure place. See, Saul repented, and we're going to get into Saul and David and the two differences. But Saul repented many times before the Lord. He was supposed to kill all the Amalekites. He was supposed to kill all the Amalekites, and he decided to not kill a few and leave some cattle because of the people. And then Saul repented, but then it said that God still rejected him because he repented of doing, not doing fully what he was supposed to do with the rams and killing all the people and all the, all the cattle, but he never repented of letting the people be his God. He never repented of, of, of breaking that fear or worry about what the people think about him. Remember, God, I believe God was even tormenting Saul's mindsets because then they came to him, Saul killed a thousand and David killed ten thousand. God was trying to break it right there because then what came under this? This vengeance came in his heart where he wanted to kill David. Oh, he's taking my his place and the my place in the people's heart now. But see, if Saul wasn't worried about the people, he would never have to come under that witchcraft of pride. See, actually, worrying about what people think is actually a foundation of pride. Many don't realize we actually one some of the reasons why we're prideful a lot of times or why. We even, even God showed me that with correction, we, get, we actually resist correction, not because we don't think it's the truth a lot of times, but because we're worried about being exposed and being seen by everybody. Worried about what everybody's thinking in that moment. Oh, now they see the shame of my nakedness. When you should have took the fig leaves off right there from the beginning and let everything be seen. See, David was living in a transparent life. Saul was living in a hidden life. But it was all about Saul. See, it's actually... When you're always worried about what people think about you, it's actually idolatry because you want to be big in the sight of everybody. Let's go to Saul real quick, and then we'll go to David. Then Samuel, 1 Samuel 15, 16 to 24, and I'm going to skip 
the middle parts here. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me that night. And he said on the, and obviously this is after he went and killed everybody, and then he's saying, Well, I did what I was supposed to do. And Samuel said, When thou was little in thine own sight, when thou was little in thine own sight, was thou made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed you king of Israel? Saul, when you weren't worried about yourself all the time, how big you were amongst everybody, that's when God blessed you with everything. That's when God made you king. He made you king because you weren't trying to be king. He made you king because you weren't trying to be seen by everybody. But when you, you were made king, it was actually exposed that you wanted to be seen by everybody from the start. See, we need to keep this place where it doesn't matter what, I don't really care if people think this, that, or the third about me. There's times we do need to think, worry about what people are thinking about us in the sense that we're representatives of the kingdom. We're ambassadors of the kingdom. And obviously, what does Jesus say? He said, let your righteousness exceed that of the Pharisees. So there's times we have to actually, Jesus was constantly getting their thoughts, the Pharisees, what they're thinking. But when they called him Beelzebub, he's casting out demons by the Beelzebub. He didn't care because he knew he was casting out demons by the Holy Spirit. Now, when we're in the flesh, that's when we need to worry about when, what, the, what the Pharisees and everybody's thinking. But when we're in the house of God now, in a safe place, in an apostolic covering, actually, we still don't worry about because we know it's a safe place. We know that everybody's going to cover us. We know that everybody's going to help us even when we're messed up or, we're, or however we are. But when we're around the Pharisees, that's why Jesus was always thinking about getting their thoughts because he was protecting the kingdom of God. See, even when he was thinking about what they were thinking about of him, he wasn't even thinking about them, their thoughts about him because it was about him. He was thinking about the kingdom of God in him. See, when Paul worried about what people thought, when this one and that one, we're going to get to some scriptures there too, they were thinking about the kingdom of God. Or if they were thinking, worried about people's thoughts about them, they were actually worried about them themselves, the ones that were thinking about them. Because, well, if, if, if my brother or sister has judgment about me and it's wrong or Leviathan, I should worry about what they're thinking because they need to be delivered and I want them to be. But it's not about me like, oh, they think, now they're thinking this about me and I'm worried about my image. No, I'm thinking about what they're thinking about because I want them to be free. Now they're, they have this wrong view of me and I don't want them to be bound up because every time they come around me, they're going to have witchcraft. Every time they come around me, they're not going to be free. And why let them sit there in lies? But if people think about us regardless, either way, good, bad, or ugly, we cannot have our mind and try to figure out all the time, all right, what are they saying about me? What are they? We need to be free and dance like David and just look at what God is thinking about and what, is, what God is doing and seeing in our life. Then we get on the witchcraft. I, if I worry about what everybody's thinking about right now, about this message even right now, I'm, and, I, and I start letting love, even, you guys could even be thinking the greatest things about me right now, or you could be thinking the greatest things about this message right now, but if I let that play with me and I live under the opinion of, of man, then after this message, I'm going to let Levi Leviathan's going to play with me and be like, oh, it wasn't that anointed or wasn't that or was that. No, I need to be free and just be free to obey God and, and whatever he does, he does and enjoy, and enjoy what he's doing. Not constantly under what man thinks about. And like I said, I'm not talking about what, when we're, our brother or sister is giving us the truth. I'm talking about when we're, that's all we, that's our God. And, Sam, and go down to verse 20. And Saul said to Samuel, Yeah, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord has sent me. And then 21, But the people took all the spoil, sheep, oxen, chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to the sacrifice unto the, God, unto the Lord thy God. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the Lord? See, it was, it's about when we do things what we do, when we come I'm around the saints or when we go at work, even at work, I, I think somebody said it today, even at work it says do unto the Lord. Not do unto the, what your other employees are thinking about you. Not do unto what your manager's thinking about you. If your manager's going to say something about you to help you, then receive it, but don't constantly come on there and be like, oh, he's thinking this, oh, he's thinking that. No, we need to be free from that. Or when we're around our family, I guess, I bet you that's the biggest thing with most people is the family it's, we get so much under witchcraft with our family because all we're worried about is their thoughts about us. And then because we're so worried about that, we start conforming because the weight of it, the, the heavy burden is too much and we just give in. And we just say, okay, yeah, I, yeah, you're right, dad or mom or cousin or uncle or aunt. Yeah, I, should, I am doing this wrong. I am doing that. But 
That's why it said, don't be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. Because guess what? Unbelievers are going to think ill of believers. Unbelievers think we're fools. But we need to be willing to be fools for God. We need to be willing to be, to be the foolish things that confound the wise things of the world. That's actually an amazing thing, that even though you're called foolish by the world and even the religious people, you are actually fulfilling that scripture by living your life like as, as free as David, by letting your foolish self fool the wisdom, the, the wise people and the wise men of the world. You may not speak eloquent, like Shane said, you may not be an orator, but you're speaking the oracles of God and people are getting saved free. What did, what did Jesus say when they came to him and they asked him about all these things? Well, he said, the deaf are being, what do you, what, like, what do you want? The, people are being healed. People are being delivered. People are, so actually, you, I'm, honestly, what you're telling me right now is not even bothering me because the fruit of the kingdom of God is right there. If the fruit of the kingdom of God is right there, what do I have to worry about what man says? They're judging the tree of life. They're judging God. They're judging the kingdom. So they will be judged according to their judgment. Actually, you should be weeping and worried about them because what's in their hearts is just being made manifest. And now what's been made manifest is now going to be judged. What a man speaks, he shall be judged by. Now you should be, now you should be in that scripture where it says, pray for your enemies, because guess what? And Jesus, when they did all that stuff to Jesus, he said, Father, uh, don't, you know, don't, don't hold this to them. That's, what, that's the level he was at, because he knew what he was doing was the righteous. He knew he was God. They were spitting in his face saying, Look at you, if you're really God, come down from there and call, you know, call fire on us or whatever. But he knew that he had a purpose and he had to do what he had to do and he had to be a fool for Christ for the world. He wasn't really foolish. He was foolish in their hearts. See, you're going to be foolish in the world's hearts and eyes, but you're wise to God. You will always be foolish to the world. And you have to accept that because this is the cost of the kingdom of God, is that the world will not like you. If the world hated Jesus, they will hate you. And they hated him because he was truth, because he was spirit, and they hate his spirit and truth. And that's what you're supposed to be, right? So we have to willing to be reviled. But if you're being reviled, reviled and you're not care, you don't give a hoot what they're thinking about in the, in the first place, when you're being reviled and persecuted, it won't hurt you. See, we, we actually let what the persecution and the reviling of people hurt us because we're worried about what people think about us. See, when we actually get out of the realm of what people think about us all the time, that I had something today where somebody was attacking me today online, and I, I, for the first time in a while, I was like, I don't even care, actually. I, I don't even care. I'll just leave her comment. I'll just leave this person's comments up. I don't even care. Because when you, when you start to get delivered from not giving a hoot of what people think, then... When people come to revive you, it doesn't affect you because you're not living in that earthly realm of thought. You're living in this high kingdom place where it's like, well, I, all I need to worry about is what God thinks about me. And when man speaks to me, if it's God, then I'll receive it. But if it's, if it's man, you don't receive it. That's, that's, the, that's how it works. But when we worry about what people think about all the time, everything people say, whether it's right or wrong, we will receive because we're worried about their opinion in the first place. We're worried about being big in their eyes. So we will conform to what they say, even if it's not from God. Now, how would you handle it if you're living under that Saul mindset where you're worried about what people think all the time, and they say you are casting out demons by spirit, are you going to go under witchcraft and hide in Elijah's cave? Or are you going to be free and say, and, and Jesus, I don't even think Jesus even, well, he did, he did respond to them, but he came in boldness to them because he knew what spirit they were from. He said, I, I know what spirit you're from. And it's the father of lies. It's the father. Your father is not Abraham. Your father is the father of all sin and darkness. See, he knew. You have to know, but you won't know if you're living under their, their little umbrella that only covers them. But God's umbrella covers the whole earth. See, when we're worried about what God thinks all the time and God's saying, it's, we have boldness all the time. You could be righteous and clean as a bone, but if you're worried about what people think all the time, you will never have that, right, that boldness that comes from righteousness. Because unless, unless everybody thinks well of you. See, we, we can't just be bold when everybody thinks well of us. We need to be bold when even they hate us. That's when we should be more bold. Jesus was the most bold when the Pharisees were around. 
And you don't think they were thinking worse thoughts than people think of you now? You think they hate, the world hates you like they do now? Wait till, wait till other things happen. Wait till you get in front of more people. But Jesus dealt with the worst of sinners. Jesus dealt with the worst of the, his own people were crucifying him. But he, didn't still, he still didn't care and he was still looking at their soul, trying to, even he was actually, and Shane said something like this too, but he was even preaching to them, even though what he was preaching was like thunder and was like lightning strikes to their hearts, he was still in a way, deep down, loving them, trying to save them. But it took, a, because their hearts are so hard, you have to take a hammer to a hard heart. And he was hammering their hearts, even though some may, may have repented, like maybe, but what's his name? What's that guy's name? The, the Pharisee that almost came to Jesus? Nicodemus? He almost came. He was this close. We don't even know. But what, he was, what was he worried about? What was the deciding factor that kept Nicodemus from following Jesus? He was worried about the thoughts of the Pharisees. He was worried about what all the Jews are going to think about him. But he could have just been converted and probably been, who knows, maybe God would have made him apostle. I don't know. Maybe he would have been the 12th apostle instead of them flinging little bones out there to fi- and with a little game to figure it out who's the apostle. Maybe Nicodemus would have been, that would have been an amazing testimony. Nicodemus, the Pharisee of Pharisees. But because of the thoughts of men, his destiny was killed. The thoughts of men will kill your destiny because you will always conform and let them decide your destiny and them decide the will of God for you and them decide what you preach and teach. That's why we have churches and systems out there, the religious system. They're preaching all according to what their people are, the, tith- the high tithers, what they think. Well, I think, you know, our, you know the, 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 the biggest tither in the church will come up to the pastor and be like, well, you know, it's, it's getting bad out there and people are getting sick. I think we should, you know, kind of do some things and do this and do that. And then what does the pastor do? Because he's worried about the people. He's worried about the money, too. He conforms. You see how this thing controls churches, controls the religious system. What the people think. Saul's kingdom is there. Is that Saul's kingdom. But we are, it says the house of David will rule rule forever. Is David still alive? No. But we, the house of David is is us. We're now the house of David. The same heart that David had for, for God. They said David was a man after God's own heart. And David, all he cared about was what God thought. All he cared about was God, what God was saying. And that's us now. That same blueprint that David was, we are now. And that's why we are the house of David that lives on forever. And ever and ever and ever. And Saul said unto, and Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. You see, he said, I have sinned. He recognized his sin, but he was recognizing the fruit of his sin. For I have transgressed against the commandment of God and thy words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. See how far it took? It's the, the, what, what people thought about Saul ripped the kingdom from him eventually and, tur- and God turned his back on him. That was his real sin. He was repenting. And even after that, it says that Samuel even turned away from him and even God turned away from him. But the whole time, he was, wasn't supposed to be repenting of what he did there, he was supposed to be repenting of what was in his heart. We need to repent of the things of our heart, not the things that we do. We need to repent of the things that cause us to do those things that we do. Samuel 6, 11 through 16. And the ark of the Lord continued. Was, and the ark of the Lord usually, it's, they always carried it around, right? But it, it was usually, it was, I, I believe it was a representation of, of God's spirit amongst them. Because when it was forbidden to open it, it was the, the glory of the Lord was in there. Continued in the house of Obed. Obadatum, the Gideite, three months, and the Lord blessed Obadatum on all his household. It was told to King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed this house of Obadatum, and all that pertaineth unto him. Let's skip down. 13, and it was so. And when they that bear the ark of the Lord gave had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. 14, and David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was girded with a linen ephod. Danced before the Lord in front of however many people were probably there, not caring at all what, as if no one was there. Was Saul able to do that? No. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting, with the sound of the trumpet, and the ark of the Lord came unto the city of David. Michael saw David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him. She despised him. Are you willing to, to, to do your thing when you know 
that when people, somebody around you is despising you? Are you willing to do your thing like Jesus when Judas was around him for three years and he still preached, teached with boldness, all power and authority, never came under what Judas' thoughts were thinking and still moved as if he wasn't even there? That's the level we need to get to. That's the level that actually will actually, see, the, you know, the anointing will actually quench. See, we, we'll actually quench the anointing when we're worried about what people think. We get that boldness. We're ready to rise up. We're ready to, to let the Lord release out of our, the rivers out of our belly. And then the thoughts of man quench the spirit in us. But really, we're quenching the spirit because we're worried about their thoughts. See, some of us have giftings and callings and things and all that, and that's all nice. But if you cannot get over what people think of you and you, and you cannot be despised by men, even sometimes people around you at times can despise you or be mad at you or offended with you, you still have to be willing to dance like David before the Lord. You still have to be willing, but you have to get delivered from under that. It is free. It's so free to live under God's thoughts. It's so free to just worry about what God thinks about you all the time. Then you're not on the witchcraft. Then you're not trying to, trying to make things happen with somebody or, or try to, you, you're trying to make things happen with this person, that person. You want it to, your, your relationship to, with them to be here or there. But you're just trying to, it's really doing it in the flesh. Only God can do it. Samuel, 2 Samuel 6.20. Now we're skipping down. Then David returned to bless his household and Michal, the daughter, his, or Michael, Again, the daughter of Saul came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself to the day, to the day in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovereth himself. See, here she came with judgment. What are you going to do when somebody comes, when somebody outside, religious people or whatever, they come with judgment, or, or you're being judged as you're dancing? Are you going to keep dancing, or are you going to... Are you going to quench yourself? He was, he was naked, and he kind of probably thought, oh, yeah, I'm not supposed to be naked. Or, but God didn't care. God was, was, it was free for God. He was free. The thoughts of men will bind you. And David said on the Macau, it was before the Lord, which chose me before your father Saul, and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord uh, over Israel. Therefore, will I play before the Lord? See, it was before the Lord. So are you, what, what you are doing, what you are serving, all you're serving, is it before the Lord or is it before man? Are you, are, every time you serve, are you thinking about man all the time? Well, I wonder if he liked that or she liked that, what I just did. Oh, I just set the tables nice. I wonder if anybody noticed that. That's bondage. Oh my God, that was such an awesome prayer. I hope everybody, bondage. Right now, what am I doing? If I go in witchcraft right now after this because I didn't like the reactions, or I wanted to be amazing, or I wanted hallelujah, I wanted some shouts, bondage. We need to be delivered from this, and we can be free, and we can all be dancing like David. I want us all to be dancing like David. I don't want no one to be in the spirit of Michael. I want us all to be free, to be who we are, to be in the Lord. I don't, of course, I don't want anybody to be, I don't want demons to be free. I don't want Jezebel to be free. I don't want all this stuff to be free. But you'll know that. But when we're free, we really feel free. So when we feel free, don't worry about what other people are feeling. Be free to be, feel free and feel free to be free. Ha! We need to be free, man. Seriously. Or else this, I believe there's so many things that we've been called to do. So many things, times we get unctions and we don't do it. Because what are they going to think of me? Well, guess what? If people think of you, even if they do think something bad, even if people don't receive you, holy is the Lord. Bless the Lord. Dance before God. And if somebody comes to correct you, receive it. So what if you get corrected? Then you're still thinking about what people think about you. See, we need to actually be free to be corrected. I'm talking to myself. We need to be free to be corrected because all we're worried about is, oh, now they're not going to see me the same way anymore. Who cares? God God gives promotion. God gives the increase. You need to worry about what is God thinking. If our mind is on man, we'll, we will be bound by man. Our mind needs to be on God and we will be free in the kingdom of God. Where is your mind? Is your mind heavenly? If your mind is thinking about man, your mind is not heavenly. Your mind is not thinking about on things above. The minute our mind gets on things below, bondage. 
We need our mind to constantly be on things above. The thoughts of man are below. The thoughts of God are higher. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So why are you thinking about their thoughts? Why are you thinking about their ways? Worry about your ways. Worry about your thoughts and let God deal with them. To appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore, I will play before the Lord. Play, David. Be free. Dance. Sing. Preach. Do whatever you need to do. Who cares? Because it's for freedom's purpose that you're doing this. And actually, you might be hiddenly, when you still stay free, when, even when people are thinking ill will about you, you might be actually delivering them in the end of the day. Because even David played the harp and Saul was sitting there being tormented by demons and he delivered him through him serving the Lord. He was doing, he probably wasn't even thinking about Saul. He was like, oh, hey, Saul, playing his harp. And then, oh my, what just happened? And he gets delivered right there. You won't even know that you're actually delivering people by being free yourself. So don't come under their bondage. They're mad. Some people actually, and I've, and I've been guilty of this, sometimes we see other people that are free and then we get bound because we're not free. Then, that per, then I, me or whoever it is that's guilty will get jealous and then it stirs up even more. But we cannot conform to that. If a brother or sister or even somebody in the world, that doesn't even matter at that point. If somebody in the world is feeling something, then... You, you just need to let the swine, you know, whatever. You need to let them be the world. And if God does something, God does something. But when it's the brethren, we have, we have instruction on it. You go to your brother, you go to your sister, or at the end of the day, you, but you cannot bound, you cannot come under them, or else it puts you both under witchcraft. That's man-pleasing. Man-pleasing is actually because all we're worried about is man's thinking. We're worried about the eyes of man. So when we're all we're worried about is what man thinks about us, what man is seeing, what man is doing, we become man pleasers because that's, the, that's our God now. We've made it a, a God in our own image. A God doesn't have to have a name. It says that, it says that, uh, uh, which one? It says Beelzebub has many, or many faces, or a hundred thousand faces, or however many thousand faces. It's whatever you make it, but really the God, even Satan's God was his own self. Your God is your own self. You're not trying to defeat Satan. You're trying to defeat self. And then you can have power over Satan. See, actually, Satan, yeah. Satan was, Satan was deceived by someone else too. If we can conquer our own flesh, we can conquer Satan. Stop focusing on him. Start dying to self. Start crucifying your flesh. Start crucifying what, it, what the world sees. And I will get to be... And look what he says. Therefore, I will play before the Lord 22 now, and I will yet be more vile than this. So he saw her judgment. I said, I'll even dance more than this. I'll even, I don't even care. I'll be even more vile in your eyes. I'll make your judgment increase. Now, that was, that was Saul's kingdom. In the world, we, we, should, be, we should be worried. Of, I mean, in, in the kingdom, we should be worried about our brother or sister. But in this instance... He said, I'll dance even more for you, Macau. You want me to dance even more? You, you, want, to you want to judge me? I'm, I'm free to be free. You're not my God. See, when people, when you, what are you worried about is what people think, they're actually your God. Sometimes specific persons we can come under all the time, but we don't care about what anybody else, all these other people think, but a specific person, even our own spouse, can bind us because you want to impress them. Sometimes we actually worry about what people think. That's why we're always, I want to impress this person. I want them to like it. I want them. Who cares? You want to impress them because you're always, that's, all, that's that you're revealing your God. Now, if I'm just getting a gift for you because I, whatever, for your, for whatever, just because I want to celebrate you, that's different. But if every little thing, oh, I got to be uptight. I got to be, oh, she or he or them or they're coming in. I better get an order. I better tighten up here. I don't want them to think anything wrong about me and nothing's wrong with you nothing's wrong with them but everything's wrong because all you're worried about is them oh here he comes so, stop talking don't talk come on more vile than this and will be base I will be humiliated in my own eyes 
I will let people judge me all day. I will let the whole city, I will let the whole town go home and judge me and say, oh my God, did you see David dancing like that naked before everybody? Let them all think it because the Lord is satisfied. And when the Lord's satisfied, he'll exalt me even more because he likes to stir up the demons. He likes to stir up Satan and get him angry. He likes to, he likes to let it manifest so then he can cast it out. Sometimes you got to let it manifest and, let it, and then you can cast it out because it's so hidden in there, but your freedom will actually make the, the bound start to, everything starts to come up and then ch a chance for freedom might actually come. In my own sight, I will be humiliated in my own sight. Even I, even if I, my flesh wants to judge me and say, I don't even care. I don't, I'm free from my flesh. And, all, and of the maidservants which thou have spoken of, of them shall I be had honor. See, because the maidservants, they were maidservants. See, amongst the brethren, amongst the true people of God that are in the spirit, I will have honor. And the others that are in the flesh, I will have dishonor. We have to be willing that we're not going to be able to please everybody. We're not going to be able to satisfy everybody. Actually, God will make sure that you do not satisfy everybody because if you did, then you actually start to, that, there's that chance of pride to make yourself, oh my God, everybody loves me. Everybody's so pleased with me. Woe to you if men speak well of you. Even in the kingdom of God. Because the minute somebody comes under the devil's deception, they'll start speaking well of you. I mean, they'll start speaking ugly of you. That actually, the more, the higher you go, the more, the, the more you get in the spirit. Sometimes the more things pe people will start to come against because you start to stir up demons. You start to stir up the flesh. You start to war against the flesh. The spirit is at enmity with the flesh. So when you start being more in the spirit and somebody is so in the flesh, swords of the spirit will start coming out of your mouth and it'll start jabbing all the, fl the flesh of the people. And, they, and if they repent, they won't revile you. If they don't repent and they resist, they'll, they will revile you. You have to be willing for both. You're going to have both in your life. You're going to have people that love you and people that hate you. But this is the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God is not for everybody. And many are called, few are chosen. It is for everybody, but at the end of the day, it won't be for everybody. Because if, you, if any man cannot deny himself, pick up his cross, he is not worthy of me. If any man cannot leave behind mother, father, brother, sister, not worthy of me. If he cannot hate father mother, father, mother, brother, and sister. You know what God gave me revelation about that too? When he said hate father, mother, brother, sister? He's talking about, because you, you can walk away from your father, mother, brother, sister, and you can say, well, I forsook and all. But inside you can still love to be around them. He's saying hate the connection. Hate coming under the family of the world. Hate, the, not them, but that, can, that soul tie. See, we, 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 we deny our family, being around our family sometimes or whatever. We, and I'm not saying, not, I'm not talking about physically being around your family, whatever. If God leads you to lead them to God, but sometimes you do have to leave in the physical, if whatever. It's different for everybody sometimes. But I'm talking about that connection. He's saying you need to hate the, the worldly connection and the man-pleasing you have to do just to be around your family. And that shows a lot when you change. We've all, I believe, we've all been guilty of this at some point in our walk. Where we get around our family, we change. We start to be different. We start to act different. Familiar spirits start to come because the same way we thought then starts to come upon our mind and the mind of Christ gets shut down and we start thinking about what they're thinking about. But because we don't want to be reviled, because we don't want to be hated by our own family, because we want our own family to love them, because we've been connected with them for so long, we don't be our king. We don't be the new creation that we were created to be because we know they'll hate that. We know they'll come against that. So we put that guy away and say, hey, just wait till we walk out the door. And then we put on the old man again because I know they'll, they'll love this old me. But we need to be willing to be hated by the old man or else we, we need to be willing to be hated by our family or else we are still connected. Or else we still have a soul tie or else we need, you need to be willing to be hated. If they love you, if they love what you preach, if they love the new creation you, glory. Who, how many can really say that though? But you need to be willing. That's when he said, hate father, mother, hate the, you know, the family. He's talking about you have to be willing to be hated by them. Because they will hate you if they're in the flesh. They will hate you if they're not of me. And they'll say that they love you, but deep down inside, when they get around you, they feel 
all types of feelings and ill and judgment. You can feel all these things with a smile on. They'll greet you, but inside their heart, they hate you. Inside their heart, they may not say, well, I don't hate you. What are you talking about? But they hate the spirit in you, and that's the spirit that you're now one with. Well, I like you, but I don't like all that religious stuff you're doing. I don't like that place you're upon. I don't like, you know, you're going to the nations now. What are you, crazy? They hate that, but you're one with that now. That's the new you now. So if they hate that, they hate you because you are of him and he is of you. So they may love the old you still. They're like, hey, get that man out. Get that. Just when you come around us, don't do all that stuff. So get this old man out. That's pretty much what they're saying when they're saying, hey, leave that religion at the door. Don't bring that all in. That's what they're saying. They're saying, bring the old man back, man. Be the old you around us. Where happened to the, the laughing Joe, the joking Joe, the one that always made the jokes and did this and did that? Well, guess what? That man's dead. Guess what? That man's on the cross. You want to go see him? Go to go go, go to go go to the what's the mountain? Whatever the mountain is, go to the mountain. That's where I am. This is the new me. Like it or not, I don't care. I will dance like David before the Lord. Are you willing? But if you can't do this, if you cannot let yourself be delivered from it, then that says a lot about you. It says a lot about what you want. It says that you want to be great in the eyes of men. See, and then you won't even worry about pop. You won't even worry about popularity anymore. You won't even worry about what people think about you. You won't even worry about your likes on Facebook because you're like, well, I don't even care what they think. So what am I going to worry about that for? God will exalt his work. God will exalt this. So what do I? And people that are like you, that like the truth, that like the kingdom, that are Davids themselves. Davids will come with Davids and they will make up the house of David. Saul's will cling to the Saul's. You get around, stop trying to man please a bunch of Saul's. They will hate you. They will be jealous of you. They will smile around you and say, hey, David, how you doing, buddy? How you doing today? You slayed 10,000. Is that right? But deep down, they're ready to, for the right time to crucify you. They got their rocks ready. Oh, David threw the slingshot at Goliath. Well, they got their rocks ready, too, to, and they're ready with their slingshot. What is it going to be? We have to make the decision tonight. We cannot say, well, let me try this one more time with these people. You're never going to do it if you want to be in the kingdom. You might have success around certain people, and you might, might, might have popularity around certain people, but that's because you're just showing that you're conforming to the people. See, how come some ministers, I've seen it where some ministers, they can go to certain churches and be received, yet in their own church or in other churches, there will be someone else. And it's like, how is, wait, that man doesn't, they, don't, they wouldn't like him, but how, they, when he goes there, they like him. Or, or the, and I mostly see it where really what all these people that prophesy and prophesy and they call themselves prophets, they go to all these different places. It's like, what? And now they're prophesying this at this place, but they wouldn't prophesy that over there. It's because everywhere they go, they're shapeshifters, they're, they're chameleons. They come under, oh, well, this is the false love crowd, so let me get some love in there tonight. Oh, tonight's going to be about love. Everybody like love? Of course the whole crowd's going to go crazy. Of course there's going to be popularity. But when they come to a, a forerunner church or a real church, they're going to be like, we need to get right with God. We need to repent. But they wouldn't do that there. That's because oh, their, God, their God is the people. They want to be received everywhere. But I'm telling you, those people will be shut down going forward. God will not allow them to do that anymore. And the people of God will start to be disgusted with this because this is, and, and God will move. But at, there has, there's coming a point where God is drawing the line. It's not even just with that. It's with many things God's doing in the whole, with the whole church. He's drawing a line and he's separating. And, but he's, he's not just, sep he's always been separating, but he's taking the wheat in his barn and he's going to let it burn. He's going to let it burn, baby, burn. And everybody's going to see the light coming from that barn. They're going to be like, wow. Even the, even the goats, even the tares are going to see the wheat burning for Jesus. Therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto that day. That was her judgment. Saul will produce no spiritual children that will last. They will produce all proselytes. Don't worry about them. The destiny that they say they're going to have, God will make sure they do not have it, not because he hates them, but because he wants his destinies that he's ordained, his people that he's ordained, his people that are actually obeying him. He loves them and he will exalt them because it is for his kingdom. 
but he will make sure, yes, not saying they won't be saved, but he will make sure the religious system doesn't have, stops having its day for, to, over the remnant. It may have its day in the world. The world will love religion. The, religion is the world. There's the, see, we have this mind like there's the world, there's religion, and then there's the, ch the actual church. But we got it all wrong. It's the church, and then it's the world. No in between. The religion is the world. Religious system is the world. They are the world. They're just acting like us. They're just acting like the kingdom. They're just acting like they're John the Baptist or this one or Elijah. So when we're around the religion, you're just trying to please the world. The system is going to die with the other systems. This, the one system, a part of the seven-headed head beast, is connected to all the other systems, a part of the same beast, riding with the harlot, riding the same beast, with the same heads. Next to the religious head is the head of health. Next to the religious head is the head of entertainment. Why do you think they move in all those seven heads? Because they're connected. Because they're one with it. And they are it. They are, they are a part of the beast system. There's no salvaging the religious system. There's only calling the people, come out of her, my people. And all it is in the religious system is a man-pleasing spirit. Everybody takes, comes together. They have all their different churches, but you, you look at some of these churches and some of them will have a Catholic priest coming in all of a sudden. It's like, what? You guys are against, you have a Catholic priest coming in now? I see, I'm not even going to name the place. It happened a year ago. Catholic priest coming in. Then some guys are taking pictures with the Pope because they all man please each other. They will preach different things. They will have different doctrines, but that's how they live. They live under each other's thoughts. Well, let's bring unity, and, but it's really called man pleasing. Because if we unify, we'll have more popularity, we'll get more money, we'll have more likes. You give me some of your crowd, I have some of your crowd. They share the crowds, they share the system, and they keep business as usual. But let's make our business grow. So let's go to that church over there that you know, we've we never been affiliated with. And wow, people will really, that will really get a lot of attention. Whoa, that... Ministry in Africa? Well, let's go partner with him. Let's do a conference with him, and I'll get some of his people, and we'll do a little trade. That's how it works. But it's all Saul's pleasing Saul's. Let's be Saul's together. Oh, I hate that David, the little guy in the wilderness, going through the, going through the wilderness, denying themselves. What do they think they are? And, they, and those same people of the system, they will try to kill the Davids all day. People of the system, they will try to murder you in the spirit. They will try to use their words to stone you. Proverbs 29 to tw Proverbs 29, 25. It is, it is dangerous to be concerned with, the, with what, this is Proverbs, by the way. I never even seen this. It is dangerous to be concerned with what others think of you, but if you trust in the Lord, you are safe. It is dangerous to worry about what people think of you. It brings in all all different types of spirits. You, you start worrying about somebody with a Jezebel spirit, what they think about you, then the Jezebel spirit will start to torment you. Yeah. Somebody with Leviathan, you worry about what they think about, Leviathan will come on you. It, it, it is actually a door to many spirits to be living with a Saul kind of mindset. Whatever is on them that will come on you, do not, do not be conformed to this world. Did that say just the systems? No. Even the the world in people. Do not be conformed to their mindsets. Do not be conformed to their thoughts. Do not be conformed to religion because really religion is of the world. They want you to wear this now? Well, all the religious ministers are wearing tallits around there and you're not, and people, you might lose followers because you're not wearing a tallit? Oh well, bye. Go wear a tallit. I'm not wearing it. Be not conformed to this world. There might be a day where there might be many people, and that, but then many people will fall away because they're conformed to the world and you're not. You have to be willing to not be conformed with them. If you trust in the Lord, you are safe. See, if you're thinking about people all the time, you're trusting in them. 2 Corinthians 5.13, if we are out of our mind, as some say, it is for God. So actually, when people say... Oh, well, Joe's out of his mind, or this one's out of their mind. What is, he's, you see him dancing up there? You see him talking up there? It is for God. 
it actually is a, a, gives glory to God because it, it, is, it is already prophesied. The, the wise will hate the foolish and the foolish will confound the wise. If we are in our own right mind, see, if we are in our own right mind, it is, it is for you. If we are in our own right mind, that's all you have to worry about is that you're in the spirit, you're in your right mind, you're not giving in to Satan. You need to know this for yourself. But we a lot of times come under man's discernment and man's thinking, and we, and we say, oh, man, do I have, am I guilty of this? Am I? And then we, the accuser of the brethren has way in our life. Because, they, well, they think this of me. They think I'm doing this wrong, so maybe I am. No, you need to know for yourself. Did God convict you? Do you, can, do you it says, I, I will bear witness of my word to you. Is it bearing witness? No, then you need to spit it out. What they're saying? Then that means every time somebody says something about you, bad about you, you get in a bad place. I don't want to be in a bad place just because of every word that comes out of a person's mouth, unless it's praise and honor. That's all we're looking for. Is if we're, all we're looking for is encouragement and, and, and honor and glory, and we're worried about man. One Corinthians four ten. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. See, you're wise. You're fools, but you're wise. You're foolish to them, but you're wise to God. You have to remember that when you feel when people come around you, certain people and judge you or the world, and you feel foolish. You need to remember you're wise to God, and God's bigger than them. God can take His finger and wipe them all out if He wanted to. You need to remember these things because if you don't, it will consume you. You need to be willing to feel people's judgments about you and still do what you're doing and still dance and still go on with the vision and still be free to be who you're called to be in Christ. As long as you're being who you're called to be in Christ, you need to, don't need to worry about who the world is called to be in Satan. But ye are wise in Christ, we are weak, but ye are strong, ye are honorable, but we are despised. 1 Corinthians 1 27. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Don't be fooled by a man that can speak great words or that has, knows all these definitions and all the, knows all these fancy things. Just worry about what you're called to do and, you will, and they will all be confounded by you. They will say, how, did this, how, does it, how, how, how can this man that you know, Moses had a stuttering problem, but he led the Israelites through the, through the desert. Actually, I've seen the thing or a little meme or whatever it is, and it said this one had this problem, this one had that problem, that one had this problem, but he still did this and he still did that. Foolish things confounding the wise. I mean, I can't even think of one, but I'm, I'm sure there's many. David did what he did, did many things. He fornicated with this one or that one. He turned on his brother, but he still was the king. He still, was, he still went back to God because his heart was for God. See, the heart of David is always for, even when the heart of David messes up. See, you can have two people. Let's, well, Saul and David. You can have two people. One person that does wrong, and this other person can do the same wrong, the same exact wrong. But if the, this one may not be reprimanded like this one may be reprimanded. This one may not be rebuked like this one is rebuked. And sometimes you can see that happen is two people could do the same thing. One could be more rebuked than the other by God, but it all depended on the heart. Why did you do it? Well, David probably just fell to his flesh. Saul was, his heart was in it, what he was doing. His heart was for the people. It wasn't like he's like, oh, you know, he was living for God and dance and being like David and then decided, oh, but I didn't want to, and then made a mistake. Saul wasn't making mistakes. He, made, he was bearing fruits of the wrong roots that were in him. David had a flesh like us, and he messed up. That's the difference. That's why God gave him mercy. It looked like God didn't even give Saul that much mercy. He turned, it said he just turned away from Saul because he knew what was in Saul's heart. But he still, after David was trying to convince himself that he was still right with God, he still even sent Samuel to say, there's a man in the city, and he's fornicated with one of the other men's wives. We need to kill him. And he said, go do it. 
And he said, David, that man is you. Mercy! Because God knew his heart. God knew that he was a man after his own heart. He was just putting fig leaves on. That's the difference. But David, David probably knew what he was doing was wrong. He probably knew it was, it was probably tormenting him, but he was trying to act like everything was cool when he could have just repented. That's the difference. But God didn't really give Saul a chance. Well, he did give him a chance, but not the same way. A few more scriptures and we're done. Galatians 1.10 I am saying this now to win the... Am I saying this now to win the approval of men or God? Am I trying to please God? If we're still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. If you're still trying to please, be pleased, if you're still trying to please people, according to the Bible, you're actually a servant of man. Why do we have, you know, God even even showing me sometimes about how we always have this perfectionist thing on, on us. We're always trying to be perfect. We're always trying to do this right. We're always trying to do that. We have our ducks in a row, but God wants to deliver us because really we're worried about what people are going to think is if our ducks are not in a row. Even when our ducks are not in a row, we still cannot come under man's thoughts all the time. We come under truth. Man speaks truth. Receive it. But you don't come live under and say, oh, he's thinking, what are they thinking? What are they thinking? What are they thinking? No, just go to your brother and ask him or your opinion. Say, hey, I need help. But, you don't, but then we go and ask the, our brother for help. And then we're like, oh. Then we let Leviathan play with our mind, play with our mind, because we're still worried about the thoughts of man. Leviathan will actually be the fruit of of, and and the, the root of why Leviathan sometimes will keep playing in your mind is because the thoughts of man, approval of man, of for affirmation. You're always seeking affirmation. You're looking for affirmation from man because your affirmation is already in heaven. Amen. If we establish our affirmation from heaven and don't build upon that establishment with the affirmation of man, we cut that out and guess what? Now we start doing things that we never done. We start being free. We start doing all these things because our affirmations from God. There's nothing that's trying to mix with that. We need to, we need to, we have, everybody has affirmation. Most people know who they are in Christ, but we need to cut out the things we've built upon that and start afresh and be free and let God start building us and, and adding to us and adding virtue and adding gifts and adding all the things, the pomegranates, fruits, some of our fruits are being cut off. There's a seed of that, but then there's the... Then we were talking in Brazil. Some of the guys were talking about how there's this vine that sometimes will wrap around some of the trees and it will choke out the, the vine that tries to supply the fruit. See, the seed is there, but there's another seed. And then that seed is, is spewing this vine and it's choking out the work of that one seed. See, we, we, there's a war of seeds even going on in us. We need to get rid of those seeds. And one of those seeds is the thoughts of man. Everybody can stand up. One Thessalonians two four. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak not as pleasing men, but God examines our hearts. See, God will examine your heart. God can give can give you a word. God can lead you to do this or do that. But then you can quench the Spirit and say, why did the Spirit... But God just told me to do that. Why did the Spirit not move? Because when you did it, then you started thinking about them. But you need to just do it and just say, and say whatever the outcome is, if they receive it, they receive it. If they don't, it, I do what the Bible says, I do what Jesus said, and dust off my feet. What did He say? Dust off your feet. He didn't say... Because why does he say dust your feet? Because the, the dust of men's mind. Oh, man, they really hated us in there, Peter. Or they hated us in there, John, because the disciples were going out, right? They, they could have been letting their minds be played with. And then what? Then guess what? They go to the next. It said go house to house, go city to city. They could have went to the next house and been like, oh, there's so much witchcraft. They're not even able to preach the gospel because the last house, they let the dust stay on their feet. Yeah. Your feet are shod, like Shane said, but our feet need to constantly be dusted off by what people think and people say and what the eyes of men are seeing. I'm just going to rapid fire through some of these. If, any, if anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, notice how he adds that in there, in this adulterous and sinful, they're adulterous and sinful. Why are you worried about what they, th what they think? If you, why, are you worried, why are you ashamed of my words if they're 
They're these words are going to judge them in the end. Why are you worried about them? The Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with all the holy angels. Then another one. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. You can have all the trinkets. You can have all the things in the kingdom. But when we deny, we, when we actually don't move in them because of what people think, we're actually denying him before man. And he says, I will deny you. So that, that, maybe that doesn't mean that I'll deny you forever, but maybe it means, you know, because then we come and we're trying to move in our gift or move in our thing. And it gets, and God denies even moving in that because you've just quenched the spirit by denying him in front of man. You may not be saying, oh, no, I don't know that, you know, like Peter, I don't know Jesus. What are you talking about? You may be denying in him by not moving in him because of what people are thinking about you. Or God tells you to do this or do that or say this or say that. But you're denying him because you don't do it because of them. Because of the approval of men. You have to know that every time you, not every time you move in God, it's not going to be the same way all the time. It's not going to be, this is, that you're going to have to dust your feet. You're going to have to be slandered. You're going to have to be, sometimes God will lead you knowing that you're going to be slandered anyway. Knowing that you're going to be reviled, but he's forming Christ in you. And here's the, the instance that he does worry about what people think. Oh, wait, let's say this one. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for their fathers used to treat the false prophets in the same way. For we are taking great care to do what is right. See, it wasn't about them. It was about to do what is right. It was about righteousness. It was about standing for the word of God. Not only in the eyes of the Lord, but also in the eyes of men. See, they worried about men not because of them, they worried about men because they wanted to uphold the kingdom of God and the word of God. See, Paul made sure his, he was doing everything right and by the kingdom standard, not by man's standard, not by man's righteousness and judgment, but by the kingdom standard so that no man could judge him and say that, well, you're doing all this right, but what about that? Jesus was able to call out the Pharisees and say, you, yeah, you tithe, you do this, but where's the mercy? Where's, the, where's this? Where's that? See, that's, what, that's the only time we worry about is when is making sure that everything we're doing is, is of the kingdom of God. Because they will, you're an ambassador, they will judge the kingdom based off of how, who you are because we are now Christ on earth. We are now his body, his hands and feet. What you do is going to matter in their eyes. But you're not worrying about what they're thinking only because you're worried about what you're upholding and what you're standing on. Make sure you're standing on the rock. Last one and we'll, we'll finish. Romans 15, we who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please our neighbors for their good to build them up. We who are strong ought to bear the failings, not to please ourselves. When people are failing, when people are on offense, when people are down, we don't worry about them because of what, they're think what now is being affected with us by them. Now we worry about them because they're in a pit. See, it's still about them. I'm thinking about what they're thinking about me, but I'm thinking about it because I'm worried about them. I'm worried about my brother. I'm worried about my sister. And Father, right now, I thank you, Lord, that you would deliver us, Father. That you would cleanse our mind, like John was saying in the beginning, that you would cleanse our mind, Father. That you would make us clean, Father, from the thoughts of men and worried about flesh of men, Father. But I thank you, Lord, that we would worry about the Spirit of God in men only, Father. Let us not dance like Saul because Saul never danced because he was worried about what the people thought. But let us dance like David, Father, and be free to be free. We're free for freedom's sake. We're free to be free with God and be one with God. Thank you, Father. Right now, just come in this room, Father, and just cleanse us. Cleansing, anointing, cleansing power that breaks the yoke, Father. Jesus' mighty name, amen.